How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and 4G LTE is nothing new to Verizon, but AT&T is just rolling out their own version of the service. It's available in nine markets as of today. And when you have 4G LTE markets, you got to have smartphones to go along with those markets. And AT&T has rolled out just that. They rolled out two as of Sunday, one of which is the HTC Vivid. It's a 4G LTE smartphone with AT&T, and it's pretty reasonably specced as well. A dual-core 1.2 gigahertz processor in this bad boy. It's got a 4.5-inch display, an 8-megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording, and Android 2.3 as well. It's a good-looking device, has some metal accents, and it's available at AT&T now for $199.99, regardless of whether you're in an LTE market right now or not. And that's all well and good. It's a great price point, but it comes in $50 cheaper than the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, which is AT&T's other 4G LTE handset. Is it worth getting this one? Should you spend the extra $50, throw down that grant, and get another uh, 4G LTE smartphone? We'll find out that more in the full review. But got to give some love to my boys at Best Buy, because when you go into Best Buy Mobile, whether you get this, the Skyrocket, whatever, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, get your camera settings set up, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're not dealing with any settings, wasting your time, sitting in the car for 10 minutes while you figure out the settings at Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. But enough of that, let's get into it. They hook us up with some awesome phones for you, Star Wampaw Bandit giveaway. So we're always thankful to them. And as always, special thanks to AT&T for hooking us up with a unit. It's the review time. On from the browser, let's jump into a hardware feature, and that's camera. Now, this has an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording. So we're going to bring over a press release here, because I just want to see how it does with text. And you can see I'm bringing over the, uh, the Droid Razor. I feel like it's blasphemous. I'm bringing over the Droid Razor's press release. So we're going to see here, uh, bring it in, focus it in, or let it focus in. Now, there's no physical camera button over here, but you do get the uh, on-screen button, and you can press and hold it to get some focus and then you can take the picture uh, there. So you can see, actually that may not be, let me see, hang on one second. Let's try that again. So there's no half press to focus. Like once you press that button, it's gonna go according to my testing just now. But you can see, here's the text, and we'll bring up the Droid Razor's ready face, blah, blah, 1.2 gigahertz processor. So let's zoom in and see what it looks like. So that's a good look. You can see even when zoomed in, very clear, very easy to read. So a good camera on this device. Now it's going to pale in comparison to the Amaze 4G, which HTC touts says the best mobile phone or best mobile camera on any smartphone. But uh, it's definitely good provided the lighting is right, the 1080p HD video. Take a look at it on YouTube or on Phone Dog because I did a sample test of the 1080p. Basically, in a nutshell, I was uh, impressed with the video, but the audio was absolutely terrible. And actually, I think I still have it on here so we can uh, take a look at it on the review video. That way, I'll save you some time as opposed to uh, going to YouTube. Although, I still think you should check it out. Let's see here. All videos. And we'll load up. So take a listen to the sound. Look, look there and you can see this plant. What's going on, guys? Here in phonedoc.com, and I'm testing the 1080p HD video recording on the HTC Vivid. Now, I'm here in Uptown Charlotte, you know, of course, it's 4 o'clock in the So you can see it's a little bit kind of, a little crackly on the sound, a little bit blown out, and you can hear all the noise in the background. The noise reduction isn't as good as it should be. So there's your 1080p HD video. Take a look for the full version. Have a look at it on YouTube or uh, on phonedog. Dot com. Now let's do. Uh, let's jump ahead a little bit and do a speed test and a quadrant standard test. And while I'm running quadrant standard, I'll talk a little bit about call quality just to give you an idea. Now I've criticized HTC in the past with some of their devices like the uh, Evo 3D for having a less than perfect wireless radio. It's been kind of frustrating when you deal with the Evo 3D on Sprint versus the Photon, for example, looking at the wireless radio difference. On this one. I do see a little bit of a wireless radio difference, though it's not noticeable like it was with the Evo 3D. I've noticed when I hold this up to the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, for example, the DBM fluctuates a little bit. I find that this one gets just ever so slightly worse service in a lot of places. Nothing to write home about, nothing to be concerned about, unless you're just in an absolutely terrible fringe AT&T area. But still, call quality is very good. I did take it to an AT&T dead spot in South Charlotte and had no problem uh, holding the call. It was choppy, almost broke up but I kept the call, and I will say earpiece is nice and loud, my callers haven't had any problems hearing me either. So I'll load this up and you can see quadrant standard, and of course it's important to note that this is, you know, take it with a grain of salt, this is not indicative of day-to-day -day performance, but a lot of people ask for this, so I always like to do it. And the uh, test comes in at 1,903. So 1,903, a far cry from the Galaxy S2's 3,200 to 3,700 uh, on that initial Galaxy S2 rollout, that number of devices that came to the US. In uh, September, if I remember right, all these dates are flying by with as many phones uh, that are coming out right now on the Android market. But 
1,903, and we'll take a look at speed test as well. Now, again, the speed test you're seeing here is an HSPA Plus speed test. It is not an LTE speed test, so keep that in mind. This is not a market that has LTE, and I'm going to give you an idea of what I've seen so far. So you can see 5. Point, I don't know why I'm using a pen. 5.02 megabits per second, you know, 5.54. So I've definitely seen some good speeds with this device, although you notice that those are off-peak times, 12.42, 12.49 in the morning. You can see... Uh, Again, all these were kind of taken at the same time. You can see the fluctuation even between a few minutes. So let's take a look now. You know, it is 545. It's kind of busy up here. Rush hour is still going on, so it would be interesting to see. And uh, even though I'm in Center City, I, see, I find the reception fluctuates back and forth. So let's take a look. Again, HSPA Plus here, but you can see I'm climbing to about 1 megabit per second, which is not the greatest in the world. But again, 1 rush hour, 2... For whatever reason, Center City doesn't, uh, this area right here, Trade and Try On area, does not do very well uh, at times with AT&T. So 2.07 megabits per second on the download. Upload's going to bring you in this time around, right around 0 0.61, 0 0.65, somewhere in there, megabits per second. Uh, so, you know, again, not the greatest in the world, but still 2 megabits per second. Faster than CDMA in most cases, although I've definitely seen higher with HSPA Plus as evident, uh, or as you can see from the, uh, from the speed tests right there. Now let's talk a little bit about battery life. Now this packs a 1,620 milliamp hour battery. I've been less than impressed with it in all honesty. Just to give you a comparison, the Evo 3D packs a 1,730 milliamp hour battery and I had some, uh, some challenges with it as well. So something to keep in mind, it's not the best in the world. It's probably not going to make you through a full day with, or make it through a full day with moderate use. You're probably going to make it into the evening before it requires a charge. When I got this in New York, I charged it to 100% put it off, or put it in my bag rather, put it on airplane mode, uh, and then took it out when I got home around 12 o'clock in the morning, turned the wireless back on, and by 10 o'clock the next morning, the battery had depleted pretty significantly, about 35 to 40%. So it may have been a fluke that one time around, but with moderate use, you know, text messaging, emailing, calling, I've gotten about 10 hours, uh, 8 to 10 hours out of it, but keep in mind that's on HSPA+. Plus. So I haven't done any formal testing in LTE, so I imagine that 8 to 10 hours will be a little bit less uh, in the LTE market, so something to uh, something to keep in mind there as well. But all in all, you know, good looking device. Let's take a look at hub and likes because I want to actually focus in. I think I may have to log in before to let me into uh, all the way into the feature. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sign in. But something a lot of people ask for that I do want to honor in this review. Let's take a look at the music application. Now, I don't have any music on this phone, so it's gonna pop up and say no music found. And this is not a Beats phone, so you're not gonna see any sort of Beats customizations. But just to show you what the music interface looks like. Here it is, and if you had music, you'd see it here, and this really isn't a great example because I obviously don't have any artists on here. But you can see my library, I can search by media servers, and then I can customize by artist, albums, playlists, all songs, genres, or composers. So I have a couple of different options there where I can categorize, and then if I wanted to, I could download, and of course, if you have an account for this, I could download Google Music from the Android market, which actually leads me right into my next thing because I was going to show the Android market anyway. So let's take a look here, and we'll look up Google Music. And we can kill two birds with one stone. How does that actually? That sounds bad. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do that. Poor birds. Google Music. You can see it pulls up here, and you can see also that the Android market's kind of experienced an overhaul here. It looks a little bit better if you're coming from you know used Android. Maybe you went to iOS or to Windows Phone. You're coming back. You notice a change in the overall design here, and that's what it looks like uh, in the landscape. You'll see there's more of a gray and kind of orange uh, color scheme now. You've got the uh, the text up here. You've got your screenshots up top. You have description. What's new? Reviews. Trading a burger for raw meat, that sounds kind of kind of depressing. Glitchy and weak UI, great app. More stuff by Google, developer, users also viewed, and then market content. So you have a couple of different options. And I like the way it looks as well when you go into the, uh, the full app screen. And it also organizes by apps, games, books, and movies. So you can get all of your content from the Android market. You can rent movies, you can buy a book, you can check out a game or uh, you can look at apps as well. So we can see here our paid, our free apps that are running high right now in the Android market. So we'll come in here and see top paid, top free, for example. You can see it categorizes them in squares, and then I can easily access each individual app. So it seems to be running relatively quickly right now, even on HSPA+. And uh, you know, I've been really impressed with the Android market. I do like the new format here between the squares and the rectangles. It has a good look to it. And uh, you know, I don't know, they've done a good job, and it definitely competes with, uh, with Apple's App Store. So kudos to them, they did a really decent job there. Now one thing I do want to focus on, this is something that Sense 3.0 does exceptionally well, and that is uh, contact organization. So we're going to go into contacts, for example, we'll go down here to people, and uh, I'll open up one of my contacts. We'll just say, we're going to open up Rick James, for example, Rick James. 
and you can see it gives me his home phone number, I can send a message to him, I can change the ringtone, I can block him, I can set a default action as well. But what I really like with this is when you contact, let's say your best friend is Rick James, and I've contacted Rick, I can come over here and organize our messages. It shows me every message we've ever sent. Uh, well, obviously messages before I've deleted them. Mail, which I don't like the fact that it doesn't bring in Gmail, uh, but it does bring in anything else. Actually, yeah, let's see, never mind. Okay, yeah, it doesn't bring in Gmail, but it does bring in, if you have a POP3 or IMAP-based solution on your device, it does bring that in. Updates and events, gallery, call history as well. So it shows me when I called Rick James, so it's like, I called Rick four days ago, I need to know exactly what time. Well, I can look at the call history here, and it specifies it. Same with messages, I can send him a message directly from this, and it loads up Rick James right there, and I can say, hey, Rick, let's party. And it's that easy. So when I back back out of it, it brings me right back to the contact. Of course, I can see the picture there. So they do a great job with this. It's by far the most organized uh, user interface out of all the Android custom skins on the market. They do a really impressive job with that. So if you rely on, you know, you call a lot of clients or you have a lot of friends or peeps and uh, you want to access things pretty easily, I'd recommend uh, Sense 3.0 just for that it does a pretty decent job there but all in all you know good handset the vivid it's available now and i'm impressed with it now you have to stay tuned for the dog fight because it's going to be a tough call between the htc vivid and the way it looks the design with premium metal accents and htc sense 3.0 which is tried and true and a lot of people really like it versus the galaxy s2 skyrocket a little bit of a plasticky device but with a little bit of a faster processor and a little bit of a higher price tag, $250 as opposed to $199. But all in all, it's a good handset. It's 200 bucks. It comes in at a great price tier on AT&T, and they've taken great advantage of it. When Verizon's pricing their LTE devices for $300, AT&T's got one for $200. So really taking advantage of that $199 price tier. I definitely recommend it as a device. And uh, you know, whether you're migrating up from an Inspire 4G or another device on AT &T, in AT&T's lineup, or another device period for that matter, you should be very happy with the Vivid. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with HTC Vivid. Keep it locked on the site for that dogfight between it and the Skyrocket and additional dogfights in the coming weeks. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're always doing contests. We give away cool devices like this all the time, both here and on the site at PhoneDog.com. Check out the One Paw Bandit game, but oh yeah, be sure to like us, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Hit us up, not literally, figuratively hit us up. And uh, follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron. Let me know, you bought this device on Sunday, you're loving it, you're hating it, you exchanged it for an iPhone 4S, or you exchanged it for a Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, let me know. Phone dog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. As always, keep it locked on phone dog.com. And also, we'll see you next time.